Kevin Barnett in the Carbide 3D Studio. Welcome to your machine setup. This will be your step-by-step -step guide on connecting to Carbide Motion version 6. We'll take you through the entire setup wizard as well as machine first movements so you can get back to making great stuff. With that, let's get started. Number one, you have to install the software. Carbide Motion lets you control your machine by jogging, setting zeros, and loading and running G-code, in this case contained in your .c2d file if you're working in Carbide Create and Carbide Motion. You can also load the .nc files coming out of other programs. A tremendous amount of work has been put in to ensure that Carbide Motion functions seamlessly with everything from a Nomad 883 to a Nomad 3 and a Shape Oco 3 to a Shape Oco 5 Pro. Head on over to carbide3d.com slash carbide motion and click Get Carbide Motion. Download and install the program. Next, with your computer on, connect the USB cable running from your controller on your machine to your computer and open Carbide Motion. Once open, you'll click the Set Up New Machine button located at the bottom center. You'll see an indication you've entered the machine setup wizard and you're ready to go. Click next. Here's where you want to make sure that your machine is powered up. For the Shapeoko, that's a two-step process. Click the power switch on the bottom of your Shapeoko control box and on the power pendant, turn the e-stop to the right and be sure the button is popped up. In this menu, you'll see a drop-down box that allows you to select which Carbide 3D machine you own. With your machine on and the appropriate machine selected, click next. Here you'll be asked to connect to the machine, click that button, and wait for it to say, Connection Established. Now your Shapeoko CNC router stores the most basic configuration parameters in the machine itself, so it's important to download these settings the first time you run your machine. Select your machine type and size, click Download. Once the download is done, you're going to move on with Next. The setup wizard is a one-time thing, but initializing your machine is something that happens every time you turn it on. Before each use, your machine has to be honed. This process moves the spindle to a known location on the back right of the machine, where the coordinates are set to zero. This initialization process allows the machine to go to the same location after being shut down and upon restart. The initialization process utilizes the homing switches on each axis. Additionally, this step includes an optional way to test all of the homing switches before initializing your machine. When this menu pops up, click Initialize Machine and expect that movement will occur right away. Once initialization is complete, you'll have the opportunity to test your machine motion. This is an optional step that tests your motion before you go any further. If you're confident your machine is going to move or has moved properly, you can skip this or you can go ahead and give it a shot. Move X left, move Y forward, move Z down, you can press them back and forth. The machine will move about an inch and will give you a feel for how it's going to behave. If you don't want to do this, go ahead and hit next. If you're running a Nomad 3 or a Shapeoko 5 or a Shapeoko 3 or 4 or Pro equipped with BitSetter, you're going to want to configure the BitSetter now. BitSetter is our automated tool measurement system that simplifies jobs to use more than one tool. If you don't have one, go buy it right now. There's a reason that it's standard equipment on the 5. You must have a BitSetter if you're really going to truly enjoy your machine. For the BitSetter to function, you have to configure the location of your BitSetter and enable it. If you don't want to use BitSetter, you can uncheck the Enable option and click Next. There are some special circumstances where you won't want BitSetter enabled, but for right now, go ahead and set it up. After clicking Enable BitSetter, perform a manual check. With your finger, depress the BitSetter a few times and make sure the indicator changes in the setup wizard. The default position for the BitSetter is pre-programmed into Carbide Motion. You can check this by clicking Move to Default Position. If for some reason you've relocated your bit setter, you can manipulate the position of your axis with the X and Y until it is directly above that new location and then save bit setter configuration. While this option does exist, 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to use the standard location. One quick note here, the vertical position of your spindle is already preset. The Z plus and minus buttons are provided so that you can move the spindle up and down to make it easier to configure your X and Y position. The Z height of your spindle is not manually configured. With BitSetter established, it's time to choose your spindle. You can have a few different setups here. Select the spindle type that you have on your machine, the Carbide Compact Router or the VFD spindle. With the Carbide Compact Router, you can be utilizing the automation of BitRunner or be operating manually. If you are using BitRunner, you want to click Use BitRunner to control router. If you're simply using the Carbide Compact Router, Go ahead and check Show Pop-Ups on RPM Change if you'd like to be notified of speed changes in your project. Definitely check that box if you're running manually with the router. Click Save Changes and then Next. The last step is selecting Machine Options. 
You can either operate in inches or in millimeters. I prefer millimeters for the small stuff when I'm at my machine. You can select whichever you're most comfortable with. Next up, there are two possible boxes. The Enable Touch Keyboard is if you plan to use a touchscreen PC and want a small numeric pop-up keyboard to appear. Next, Enable Remote Access. This allows Carbide Create to send files directly to Carbide Motion. If you'd like that capability, go ahead and check that box. Once you've made all your selections, save changes and click Next. With that, you'll be notified your setup is complete. Go ahead and click Finish. Carbide Motion will now disconnect from the machine so you can restart with that configuration you've just established. Your machine will now run the basic initialization process and you're ready to make something. With your machine connected, go ahead and check out the rest of our video training. Go on over to my.carbide3d.com. We have more than five hours of video training classes to get you started. Everything from getting started with CNC, running a Shape Oco, getting started with Carbide Create, and we'll take you through your first five projects. Everything we do is geared towards you winning with your machine. We're glad you're here. Welcome to the Carbide 3D family.